and then I ask for just stand, just stand and you know, let's worship God. And then let's, let's not see, let's bring the praise. He said he inhabits the praises of his people. So it starts with you, amen. Amen. Go ahead.
chapter 14 and I'm just going to add to this just a little bit. Amen. Then when we're going to give invitation he's going to come back and sing again. Amen. It's very important tonight when you find your place in verse number 22 I ask you to stand for the reading and the honoring of God's word. This is his word. Amen. And it is holy. Hallelujah. I'm glad you're here tonight and I'm glad that Brother Philip just shared his heart. It's very important it's very important to you uh, that you'll worship, that you enter uh, His courts with thanksgiving in your heart. You enter His courts with praise. Amen. That's what we ought to do. Amen. But every storm has an eye. I said every storm has an eye. In Matthew chapter number 14, verse number 22, the Bible reads, And straight away Jesus constrained His disciples to get into the ship and go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitude away. And when he had sent the multitude away, he went up to the mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled. And they began to say, it's a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straight away, Jesus spake unto them, saying, be of good cheer. It is I being not afraid. Hallelujah. And Peter answered him, Come, Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it thou be bid me to come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. 
But when he saw that the wind was violent, he was afraid and, being, and beginning to sink. And he cried unto the Lord, Save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and called him and said unto him, Thou of little faith, where did a stop doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that were with was in the ship came and worshipped him and said, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. Preaching on the subject tonight, every storm has an eye. Let us pray. Father God, we just thank you tonight, Lord, for what you've already done. Father, but it ain't nothing but the beginning of what you're about to do. Father, I pray tonight, Lord, that this word will touch the hearts of your people. God, I know that your word has come to set the captive free, Lord. God, I pray tonight, Lord, Father, that you undo every chain that the enemy's placed upon us. Father, he's told us so many times that we'll never make it, but somehow, God, some way, out of all the storms of life, God, we're here tonight. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you do something amazing with inside of these doors tonight. God, these is your sheep. These is your lambs. And Father, I pray that you feed them tonight. God, as I stand behind the sacred desk tonight, Father, I pray, God, that there will be a special anointing poured out upon me. Father, I don't want my name recognized, but God, I want your name glorified tonight. Father, this is not about me. I didn't come here to put a show. But God, I come here to preach this gospel. Lord, I know that this gospel is sharper than a two-edged sword. Father, I pray, God, that you touch every heart, every soul in this building tonight. And Father, we're going to give you the honor, the praise, and the glory. And it's in Jesus' name. Everyone say it. Amen. 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 Every storm has an eye. Ask Brother Mike if you're going to fill this cup up. It don't matter to me, brother. Amen. We brothers. Amen. I'm glad you're here tonight. Amen. I'm not going to keep you long. I promise. I'm going to keep you long enough for God to do something with you. Amen. Amen. Do something inside of you. Amen. Now I want you to understand what's going on here as we read this scripture. Amen. Now Jesus had just performed a miracle. Amen. One of the big one of one of the biggest miracles that he's ever performed. Amen. He just fed five thousand folks. Amen. With two fish and five loaves of bread. Amen. But there was one thing about that when he fed those. 5,000. It was actually more, a little more than 5,000. But the Bible only records 5,000. Amen. But I want you to understand something. Jesus took uh, two fish and five loaves of bread. Amen. And he began to break that bread and it began to multiply. Reason I'm saying that tonight because a lot of time that we, if we would become broken, we could begin to multiply. Amen. We could have an impact in somebody's life. Amen. I'm telling you tonight what's the problem with mankind today is the storms that comes in our life begins to sink the ship that we're traveling in. Amen. Because a lot of times the house that we live in is not built to withstand the storm. Amen. I'm telling you something tonight and I'm going to preach this in just a little bit. Every storm has an eye. Amen. If you watch the news tonight, if you watch the Weather Channel, next week we're supposed to endure a tropical depression. Now, tropical depression is, is not a complete storm. Amen. It's a little bit of wind and it's a little bit of rain. But they said once it gets into the Gulf, it will begin to anticipate what a tropical storm is. I want to reframe this for just a moment. Just the tropical depression is winds up to like 45 miles an hour. Now it takes it, the longer it sets and that storm feeds off heat, amen. It feeds off the heat and it makes it strengthen, amen. But on the middle side of that storm, there is called an eye once it ever forms, amen. 
And I want you to understand something. Those winds can be very dangerous. The lightning can be very powerful. And not only that storm, but it will begin to produce small tornadoes that comes off of that storm. Now I want you to understand something tonight. That in life's journeys, we have to face a lot of storms. The wind blows mighty hard. I'm telling you something. The clouds in the sky get dark. And not only when it begins to grow that's over us, it begins to spin other small storms off of it. And listen to me, honey. If we're not equipped to be able to face those storms, it ain't going to be long that we're going to see. How many of us tonight has ever felt like we're going to sink that we couldn't take no more than what we was taking what was being put on us? We sat down in the middle of the floor. We got on the chair and said, God, how much more am I going to bear? Honey, I want to tell you something tonight. God ain't going to give you no more that you can't have. Amen. I'm telling you something tonight. A lot of times we have to walk through that fiery furnace that we can come out smelling like Jesus. Come on, somebody. You for a while, amen. I ain't gonna keep you long. I'm trying to get to the point, amen. Every storm has an eye. These disciples, Jesus said, I'm gonna send you over the Sea of Galilee. Now, I don't know exactly how many miles it was across the Sea of Galilee, but it was a long ways. I've done the research before, I used to could tell you exactly how far it was, but it ain't the tip of the subject tonight. It's because there was some men that was in a boat that had rolled their self right into a storm. Come on, come on. My, my, my. Bless God. <laughs> See, a lot of times, God tells us to do something, and He knows what's going to happen. He knows what we're going to have to face. But a lot of times, watch this, we try to talk ourselves out of doing what God has commanded us to do. You know why? Because you can't see what's laying behind the on the eye that we can see. That's why we want to get out of it. Honey, it's time. If you, try, if you claim to be a child of God tonight, you're sitting in this building. You've got to quit trying to worry. Look at your neighbor and say, it won't be long. It won't be long. He, could, he directed those disciples. He said, get in the boat and go before me to the other side. While I'll send these crowd, this crowd away. See, Jesus knew that these men was his disciples. He trusted in them. He believed in them. Now, I want you to know something tonight. That we are disciples of God. If you're a disciple of God tonight, I want you to raise your hand. Amen. So why are you afraid to do what he's commanded you to do? It's because you can't see beyond the eye. Amen. You can't factuate in your mind how big God is. Come on. You can't understand in your mind how big God is. I want to just tell you how big he is. In six days, he created everything that the eye can see. Come on. He's created everything that the eye can see. So if he's created everything, that means he knows everything. Amen. I'm telling you something. You ain't never been in a mess that God can't get you out of. I'm telling you. How do you know that, Pastor? I'll tell you how. I was on my way to prison. He broke the chains of the doors that the prison held. Amen. He delivered me and set me free. I serve a God that is on time. I serve a God that is bigger than any power that you and I have. Come on, I'm your witness tonight. 
My wife said, how can you sit here with a smile on your face knowing that you fixed to do prison time? I said, honey, listen to me. God didn't bring me this far to let me down. God's going to bring me through this. I may not know what the outcome is, but honey, I can assure you the Son of Man knows. Can I get a witness to that? He said to these disciples, he said, I want you to go to the other side. And I'm going to go to this mountain up here. I'm going to pray for you. Come on, come on. Yes, it is. Hallelujah. The Bible said he went there to pray, Brother Philip. He was praying for them. He know that in the middle of that, in the middle of that, over, in the middle of the Sea of Galilee, there was going to be something that shook them up. There was going to be something that was going to get in the way to try to keep them from going to the other side. Because the other side of that mountain, there was two men that lived in the grave in the tombs out there. Go ahead and read the story. There was two out there that was possessed. The Bible said that no man could tame them. Amen? But they didn't know Jesus. Amen? I'm telling you something tonight. They was going to the other side because in the middle of those tombs, Brother Jack, there was a soul that needed saving. Amen? I'm telling you, God can do anything that man can. Amen? Man can do nothing without God. Amen? Hallelujah. I'm giving you a chance to get out while you can. Because the old storm has an eye. Amen. Well, what do you mean, Pastor? I'm going to share, share that in a minute. Right about the time I close out. Amen. <laughs> if you ever know anything about the weather channel, I'm a weather channel for you. <laughs> Amen. If you give me Fox News and the weather channel, we'll be right on time. I don't watch CNN. Amen. I'm trying, I'm trying to even get away from Facebook. Amen. I don't want nothing hindering me than what God wants to do inside of me. Amen. He said, I want you to go to the other side. It's a mighty long ways over there, Jesus. But I need you to go to the other side. Before we get there, I'm going to go to this mountain and pray. Hallelujah. So he sent the multitude away. He went up into the mountain apart, the Bible said, and prayed. When the evening was come, amen. Now, don't you understand? These disciples was on their way. They didn't have a big old Johnson or Evan Root boat motor tied onto the back of that boat. What they had is they had oars. They was very familiar with the Sea of Galilee. It was a very familiar place for them. And they knew it wasn't good to be out there at night. But if Jesus said go, honey, yeah, we got to go. Amen. I'm telling you something. So they began to roll for a while. And out of nowhere, in the middle of the Sea of Galilee, there was something that grew up. Amen. I want you to know something. On life's journeys tonight, there's storms that comes in our lives, sister. There's things that we're going to have to face. Whether it's financial struggles, maybe it's health conditions, but there's one thing that I can assure you. If you're a child of God, these things come your way. You don't have to face them alone, honey. I said you don't have to face them alone because the Bible said that I will never leave you, nor shall I forsake you. The reason I say that so much because it's very important that you and I know if God be for us, who in the world who can be against us? I'm doing the preaching, man. I'm telling you. Amen. They got in the middle of that boat out in the middle of the Sea of Galilee. It was it wasn't a, a little small, small wave anymore. These waves begin to grow. Amen. They felt the wind that they were familiar with. Amen. They knew that if, if this wind come out of a certain direction, that it mean that there was going to be a storm. I believe, sister, that as they looked across that
that Sea of Galilee. Behind them, the stars were shining. Hallelujah. But before them, it was dark as it could be. And out of nowhere, they could see a burst of lightning. Oh, Peter said, we need to turn around and go back. And somebody in that boat said, Peter, we can't turn around and go back. God has commanded us to go to the other side. Come on, somebody. God has commanded us to go to the other side. See, in life's journeys, God said, don't give up, but give in. Amen. I tell you something, we always try to look for a way to get out of it instead of going to the other side. God knows what the outcome's going to be, and a lot of times we don't never see the outcome because we're not strong enough to have enough faith in God to take us to the other side. Oh, we see a little cloud grew up in our life. The enemy begins to attack us a little bit. Oh, we want to give up. I ain't going back down to that church. I didn't like what they said. Honey, if you're going to try to please somebody, you're going for the wrong reason. <laughs> Jesus. 
Jesus ain't gonna bring you to no battle that he ain't gonna follow you to try up. I mean, why do you say that, Pastor? Because Jesus was victorious uh, that you and I would be victorious the same way. Uh, amen. Listen to me. Well, Pastor, I'm worried about dying. Uh, I ain't gonna die. I've already died one time. Oh, so I got to die one time. Oh, I ain't gotta die again. Amen. If I leave this body, I'm gonna be in the presence of with a holy power. Somebody help me out. Say, hey, if I get killed out in the middle of it, oh well. Amen. That means I'm gonna spend the rest of my life with the king. Amen. I don't know about you. We too much worried about this place being our home. But the Bible said, Paul said this, action from the body means presence to the Lord. Good God, I'm gonna stand with that. Amen. I'm ready to leave this old wicked world to be with my Lord and Savior for the duration of the rest of my life. disciples. I want you to understand something. These disciples weren't completely where they needed to be at. Amen. Peter ain't even got saved yet. Amen. He just had an encounter with Jesus. I told y'all that the other day. See, a lot of people didn't know that Peter, none of these disciples was saved yet. Amen. I'm telling you something. They never did get what God had for them until after the ascension. Amen. After the, after the death, the burial, and the resurrection, when they were in that upper room, that's when everything changed. Amen. That's when everything changed. Peter said, if I ever get one more chance, I'll make it right if I can ever get around Jesus one more time. He told Peter, he said, you're going to deny me three times by the time the cock crows. He said, I bet you I know, Lord. God knows everything. Amen. That's people that just do it. Keep denying the power of God. Come on. Come on. But if Jesus said go, we're going to go. Here's our problem tonight. We feel the wind blowing. We feel the wind blowing. See a little thunderstorm raise up. You know what we do? We run home. We lock ourselves in a closet. Oh, we get ready. Why? Because we know what it's like to do a tornado drill. Amen. Come on. I remember in school, Buddy Powers in here with us. We had to do tornado drills. Amen. You know why he tried? They tried to prepare us in case a storm would come. Amen. There's always preparations that has to be taken when a storm is approaching. That's the same way it is in life's trials and tribulation of the storms of life. God gives us every direction, every preparedness, everything that we need to face the storms of life. But Pastor, what is it? There's a sound that always goes off before you have to face a storm. These disciples were facing a storm. They began to be in terror. In the storm that they was about to face. It wasn't a spiritual storm. More than it was a physical storm. Their boat was being battered. The waves was raging. And that seed was calling their name. Doing everything that they possibly could. I want you to understand something. It was those demonic presence of, that was on the other side of the Sea of Galilee that was causing that storm to brew. See, that Satan knew that God was fixing to show up. And when God showed up, uh, he was going to have power over those demonic spirits. Amen. He was trying to Thing that he possibly could to get these disciples uh, out off the track. Uh, see, that's the same way that, in, that the enemy and the adversary tries to do us. Uh, we we'll go to the doctor. The doctor gives us a bad health report. Uh, we take that. We go back home. Uh, and we moan and we groan. Uh, we complain. Uh, oh, I don't know what else I'm going to do. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to take 
this. Well, you gotta understand, cancer's bad, cancer is bad, but I serve a God that is better than that cancer. Amen. I serve a God that can overtake that cancer. Well, I've been diagnosed with congestive heart failure. That's why the doctor told me that I was a prime candidate for all the drugs and the alcohol that I've ever done. You're a prime candidate for congestive heart failure. I told him, look at him, brother. God is what pumps that blood. Amen. 
Everybody Jesus ever touched had a running spell. Amen. Yeah. Amen, Peter. Peter and John come to the beauty of the gate, which is called beautiful. Oh, he was big guy was sitting there begging. He said, can you give me something? I'm going to give you something that money can't buy, honey. I'm going to give you the power of God. Amen. Amen. What did that man do? He got up, got the leap, and amen. I'm telling you something. He had something inside of him that couldn't be stopped. Amen. Hey. Hey. Oh. oh, Jesus had his eyes on them disciples. I believe they started praying. Oh God, you sent us all the way out here in the middle of the sea. Oh God, where are you at? But oh God, you know these waves is bad. They over the top of this boat, we keep taking on water. Jesus, you sent us out here to die. I believe that they feared it, amen. But listen, they begin to keep looking back from where they start. I knew they kept looking back for a reason, amen. You know why I say that? Because they seen a ghost, they thought. They seen a light coming across the Sea of Galilee. It wasn't none of the water. The Bible said that it was walking on the water, amen. I'm telling you something tonight. Every storm that you face, I can assure you. Man, I'm, I'm ready to run. You ready to run with me? Tyrell said, I'm not in no shape during that night. Listen to this. The Bible said in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. The Bible said that they began to be afraid. They was looking behind them. They was expecting this Savior to come to their rescue. If we would ever have a mindset, in our mind, we ever come to the point to say that Jesus has always got our back. When we come to the place in our life that we can crucify the flesh and say, flesh, I'm not going to take those lies anymore. You're not going to tell me that I'm fixed to drown in the middle of this ocean because I belong to a Savior. His name is Jesus. And as long as I've got Him, I've got everything that I need. Amen. He is my life preserver. He is my life Savior. He is everything I've ever wanted. And He so is everything I've ever needed. Stay with me because I'm getting to the eye of the storm. He spoke to them because they were shaking. How many of you have ever been into a mess in your life that you didn't know what else to do? I've been into a lot of places like that. I couldn't sleep at night. I'd lay and I'd toss and I'd turn and I'd cry when there wasn't nobody looking. Hey Amen. I've been there. Oh, and the doctor told me things. Not only the doctor, but the enemy told me, yeah, you're supposed to be a Christian and you serve a God that is mighty. Where's your God at now? You know the lies that Satan tells God's people? He tries to convince them to believe that there's no hope. It's actually. He tells them that nothing God can do. You are on your own. If God really loves you enough, he'd save your husband. Honey, that's a lie straight from the devil's mouth. You tell the devil to sit down and shut up because my husband will be saved by the grace of God. I know how the enemy tells those lies. Your husband ain't going to never quit drinking. He's going to keep on doing the same old thing. He may keep on drinking, but I'm going to keep on praying. Amen. I'm going to keep on believing that one of these days, and I don't know what it's going to be in, when it's going to be, but I know when God, He's always on time. He's never 
late. Uh, he's going to walk through those doors. Uh, he's going to walk down to that altar. And you ain't got to tell him, do you want to go down there? He's going to get up. Uh, he's going to go on his own. Uh, he's going to get his knees. Uh, he's going to give his life to God. Praise God. Listen to me. Don't let him talk you into being afraid. God is still the same today as He was when He created everything. He is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He is our Father. Amen. I want you to understand something tonight. Well, Pastor, I've been trying to get my husband for a long time, and I just don't know if it's ever going to work. Uh, honey, I'm here to tell you tonight, uh, my wife will tell you, I never gave up. Uh, I never stopped praying. Uh, I just kept on carrying his man down to the altar and laying it down on there. Honey, let me tell you, keep on lifting his name up, uh, because one of these days, uh, when you're least expecting it, uh, I'm telling you something, the chains of hell Jesus, he ain't going to save you now. You done got yourself out here in a mess. I thought he loved you. You thought he loved you, didn't you? Oh, they began to convince to believe them lies. But they began to keep looking behind them, amen, because they knew that Jesus had already told them that he'd never leave them nor forsake them, amen. And they seen this light begin to come over. And, he, and they said, oh, is that a ghost? No, that was Jesus showing up on the scene. Here's what I'm trying to tell you tonight. Every storm has an eye. Amen? Amen. Come on. I said every storm has an eye. And that eye in the middle of that storm is calm. Amen? Amen. There ain't nothing blowing. There ain't no wind stirring. There's somebody, something in the middle of that. It's going to give you a peace of mind. Every storm has an eye. And Jesus is the eye of every storm. He's going to provide a way. He's going to make a way. Because he is the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lamb of Almighty God. Come on, quick, come on, come on. I'm going to wind this up. I've done kept you long enough. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, thank God he's done. <laughs> just start playing that song, brother. Because we're going to tie this song up in just a minute. I got to get up early in the morning. <sighs> y'all want me to call y'all and wake y'all up when I get up? I will now. Amen. Son, I was a long way before that, brother. Listen to me. In the middle of that storm, they thought it was all over. But Jesus knew their name. I don't care what you're facing. I do. But you ain't got to tell me. Jesus already knows. Because he knows your name. Every storm has an eye. And if you go back and do the research, sometimes that eye is a hundred miles wide. It can be as big as 300 miles. But in the middle of that storm, it's very calm. Around there, outside those boundaries of that eye, it's the most powerful and the intense of that storm. And in those storms, there's a lot of casualties. There's a lot of people that loses a lot of things. But there's a lot of people that may lose their possessions. But if they're prepared, they know that as soon as that storm as the eye begins to cross over, it's going to let up. And that gives you a chance to observe and take an evaluation of the things that's been destroyed. And 
in life's trials and tribulations and the storms of life, sometimes the eye passes over and God gives us a chance to observe the things that the storm has destroyed. We can take it, we can look, we can observe it. But when that 300 mile circle the storm is going to start back up. But a lot of times, the worst of it has done passed over. My God, I feel this thing. So we take an inventory on the things that we've lost. And we stand in the middle of that eye. And we look around us. tonight it's the most important thing I still got you Amen. see those disciples Peter said this when Jesus showed up he said get me out of this mess that I'm in that's basically what he was saying he was ready to get out of that boat he said Peter come Peter, look at me. Look at me. And he began to look at Jesus for the Tyrone. And he looked at the water and he said, I can't do this. Jesus said, yes, you can, my child. Don't you give up now. Get out of that boat and come. Peter stuck his leg over the edge of that boat. It was shaking and it was rocking. He said, come, my child. He got out of that boat. He's looking to Jesus' dead eyes. He knew that the danger that surrounded him. But at that time, there was a peace in the midst of that storm. He said, come. Peter got out of that boat. And he began to walk toward Jesus. See, he was already doing the same thing that Jesus was doing. But a lot of times in the middle of our storm, we get distracted. We take our eyes off Christ. We have to learn a very valuable lesson. Oh, I feel God in this place. Peter began to look off. And he was worried about the circumstance that was around him. And the Bible said that he began to sink. I know what Peter felt. Because of life's problems, a lot of times, we find ourselves sinking, Miss Ashley. We feel like we're drowning, Brother Cole, in the midst of life's problems. But Jesus said, my ears is not too deaf that I can't hear. My arms is not too strong that I can't reach. Peter again said, save me, Jesus. And Jesus reached down in the middle of that gusting water. And he picked him up. And he picked him up. And he said, my child, it's going to be all right. behind you is behind you. You leave that garbage out there. 
But you say from this day forward, in the eye of this storm that I felt Jesus touch my life, he took and he stood up in that boat and he spoke to that sea and he told him to be still. I don't know how high the, the, the seas is rolling in your life. I don't know how big the storm is, but I can tell you this tonight, sister. Jesus said, I command that wind to quit blowing. I command that storm to cease. He said, tonight, Jesus is my name, and I am in authority. Hey, come on, somebody. I'm in authority of every storm that rages in your life. But tonight, you're going to give a presence and a peace that you ain't found in a long time. My name is the living of the valley. I'm the rose of Sherman. I'm the Messiah. I am Christ, the Savior of this world. In the middle of that storm, there's God. Oh, I feel God in this place. Stand with me tonight. Stand with me tonight. I'm telling you something. He got in that boat. And Jesus looked out across that old range and said, Oh, the voice of hell was calling their name. Watch this. And Jesus looked at that sea. He said, I demand you to be still. Shut up, Satan. I'm in authority in this place tonight. I'm going to the other side. I'm telling you something. Those two men on the other side that was in that tomb, oh, they couldn't nobody tame them. But when Jesus landed on the shore, the Bible said that they run down to where he's at and started worshiping him. There's some of us tonight that needs to worship in the eye of the storm. Sing it, brother, sing it. We fix the line of this thing. I'm here to tell you tonight how to be anointed in the power of the Holy Ghost. Your storm is about over. Your storm is about over. Jesus said, I'm going to 